Hello, this is Brian. Those two trees, there's actually three trees I was just shooting pictures of. Those are some of the most premier fall color trees. Those were American Sweet Gums, Liquid Ambar Styraciflua. Some of the most reliable fall color trees, even here in Orange County, Southern California. They're native to the eastern half of North America, <clears throat> ranging from the northeast, even all the way down into Guatemala. Liquid Ambar Styraciflua is a member of the Altingia family, the Altingia Aptei. Get some more good footage here. Here's a younger one here. Okay. Sweet gums are characterized by having relatively star-shaped leaves, not unlike maples. However, maples' leaves are alter al oppositely arranged. Sweet gums are alternately arranged. That's how you can tell the difference. See these leaves alternate on the stem. Maples' leaves are oppositely arranged, opposite one another on the on the stem. And sweet gums out here seem to be all on different schedules because they come from such a wide range. If you get DNA from sweet gums that are from further north, their leaves will likely color earlier. And if you get them from DNA of sweet gums further south, then some of them remain green well into late fall and even in winter. And some sweet gums actually retain half of their leaves, which is kind of a weird, weird thing about the the sweet gum tree. And another way you can tell these from other trees are the spiky, spiky hard balls, which are uh, the aggregate of seed capsules that uh, fall from the tree and litter the ground. Sweet gum has always been one of my favorite trees because of its outstanding beauty and if you crush a leaf it has a delightfully resinous smell to it one thing I've always loved about sweet gums so again they're in the Altingia family Altingiaceae A-L-T-I-N-G-I-A-C-E-A-E -E, but they used to be labeled as being in the witch hazel family the Hamamela ha, it's hard to pronounce it Hamamelidaceae used to be Group with the witch hazels, and some texts still refer to it as being in Hamamelidaceae. So right now, current botanical nomenclature listed as part of the Antigia family. So, fall color on sweet gums ranges anywhere from yellow to purple. Yellow to purple, and it differs on each tree. Some trees, then some trees will have all the colors together. It's always been one of my favorites growing up and it continues to be. Uh, here's one tree that has become quite popularly planted here in Southern California over the last few decades. And it comes, usually if you have a book on trees, it comes after liquid ambar sterase fluid, Liriodendron tulipifera. This is called the tulip tree also known as tulip poplar, yellow poplar. And these trees can get quite tall, actually. These are actually some of the tallest hardwood trees in the United States. They can get up to well over 100 feet, sometimes up to about 150. And records have uh, shown 
in the past these trees have gotten over 200 feet tall and like sweet gum it's native to the eastern half of North America and this tree is losing its leaves for winter and it gets this kind of buttery yellow fall color however in climates where autumns are much cooler than here in fact we've had one of the hottest autumns on record here in Southern California colder colder fall and winter climates these trees can turn brilliant lemon yellow and as a person who's lived in New Jersey before I can attest to that again beautiful tree beautiful bark lightly furrowed and you get these odd, odd shaped leaves let me see if I can find some zoom in a little bit they're kind of poor lobed you can kind of see here they got like they got these little horns and then they have lobes over here so okay so I mentioned a few different names of this tree like yellow poplar, tulip poplar, tulip tree. Well, it's not a poplar. This tree is actually in the magnolia family, the magnoliaceae. So it's related to magnolias. Oh, and then we got ourselves here. I think that's a fox squirrel right there. I believe that's a fox squirrel. It's actually a non-native squirrel. But you can see get a lot of these squirrels here in California. This is not a California ground squirrel. The color is quite similar, but it lacks the spotting that you would see on a California ground squirrel. So this is actually a non-native squirrel. I can tell it's a male. He's a male. And they have become quite popular here and common here in Orange County over the last few years. We even had them come up to my apartment in Buena Park. So I know I'm getting a little off topic talking about talking about squirrels, but just goes to show you. You know, I mean if you've seen my videos that I'm very passionate about going up in the mountains and the national forests and hiking in the chaparral, but you can find lots of treasures in your own neighborhood if you take the time to look. And that's kind of what I'm doing today. I'm trying to trying to enjoy these little treasures. You can find them if you look hard enough. Sometimes you don't have to look that hard. So, in this video I've talked about sweet gum, talked about Liriodendron tulipifera, the beautiful tulip tree. And obviously not the right year to see their flowers, which are very much tulip-like, but are usually found in the higher portions of the crown, so usually you only see them when they fall on the ground, or if you have a very good, very good Binoculars, very good set of binoculars or camera zoom. But I've always thought these were incredibly beautiful trees. I just like the shape of them, and I've seen them get quite tall out here in, in Southern California too. But I've noticed they're being planted a lot more. These trees have been planted a lot more in the last 20, 25 years, and this is actually quite typical of their shape, upright relatively narrow crown and in forests where they're common they are often a lot more narrow and the crown starts much higher in the tree but there you have it what a beautiful tree that is and the leaves kind of quiver like a poplar I guess maybe that's where poplar came from oh. There's lots of nice trees here in this park. I like coming here. And of course, Peruvian pepper tree, Skinnis mole. Another very common Southern California tree. And we got Canary Island pines. These are a dime a dozen here planted in Southern California. 
Venus canariensis. It's one of the one of the first trees I learned as a kid. You know, growing up in San Diego, you see these trees a lot there too. And their needles are very long, a lot longer than our native pines like Coulter pine and stuff like that. Then we got deodar cedar, Cedrus deodara. Also in the pine family, Panaceae. These could be our island pines. They can be very narrow crown. These very narrow crown and upright, kind of like our mountain pines. You see my videos on Jeffrey pines and Ponderosa pines. They can be quite similar in shape and form. The only thing is they're not closely related to any of our native pines. In fact, one of their closest relatives is over here, and that's the Aleppo pine, Pinus halepensis. That's the closest, one of the closest relatives here, planted here. It's the Aleppo pine from the Middle East and Mediterranean regions. It's actually a close relative. It's in the same group, the Pinaster group. regularly shaped trees. When they're young, they're a little more formal. But when they get bigger and taller and more mature, they get these sometimes really crooked shapes. Just really nice looking trees. Beautiful tree actually. Very well adapted to our climate. And you can even plant these in desert, desert climates with minimal irrigation. And it'll be fine. A lot of our desert, desert communities, our warmer desert communities, are completely landscaped with these trees because they can stand the heat without any problem. I've got more Canary Island pines over here. And a baby coast live oak. So, get a lot of common landscape trees here. We also have other pines here too. We used to we used to have gray pines, Pinus sabiniana. Used to be two of them over towards the back of the park, but they've long since been taken out, unfortunately. Kind of sad, actually. They're actually gray pines, they're native. And then, of course, if you're a Southern California resident, you'll come to know Jacaranda mimosifolia. Very, very well-known tree here. It's in the Bignonia family, Bignoniaceae, which is the same family as the, the Catalpas sometimes, which are planted here in SoCal. And these trees are typified by their ferny foliage and rounded seed pod or seed capsules. <clears throat> Actually, just want to get out of the way of the car, the drivers. Get out of the driver's way. That's the seed capsule. It's kind of flattish, slightly flattish, but you know, a little wavy. And it splits open in half, and these rounded wing seeds come out. So this grows in a usually more of a subtropical tree, as opposed to a temperate tree. <clears throat> And here's an up close of the foliage. Again, very fern like foliage. And there's an immature seed capsule right here, that rounded thing. And mid spring through 
nice chunk of summer. Trees that are not completely trimmed back like a lot of them are here. They trim the heck out of these trees all the time. Get this profusion of purplish blue flowers, sometimes covering the entire tree. This is not the season to show it because we're in December, beginning of December. But that's what the seed capsules look like when they split open. Another very commonly planted tree here. None of them still have flowers, but some trees will flower into even into autumn sometimes. And of course, trees that are very commonly planted in parks, residential areas, business districts. Platinus hispanica, also known as Platinus acerifolia. And it's still often known as that. This is the London Plain. It's a type of a sycamore tree. The genus Platinus. And these are extremely commonly planted here. And they're losing their leaves because they're winter deciduous. They shed their leaves in the fall. The leaves are very sycamore-like. They're also very maple-like. Kind of star-shaped, but kind of like the sweet gum a little bit. And alternately arranged, as you can see here. Whoa, sorry about that. Alternately arranged. And they also get their <coughs> seeds and seed balls as well. However, sycamore seed balls and plane tree seed balls break open into little seeds. Whereas the uh, sweet gum seed capsules have seeds inside the capsules that fall out, little wing seeds. There you have it. Looks like there's a young young London plane tree seedling right here. I don't see those very often. I don't see them germinate very often. London planes are often confused with our native relative, and I've done a spotlight on trees on this video, on this tree before. I've done a spotlight video. California sycamore, Platinus racemosa, also has seed balls. These will disintegrate, and they'll disintegrate into individual seeds. Uh, it's another tree that's very commonly landscaped here, and it's a native. <laughs> you know me, I like to go native when I can. Okay, here's a non-native, and it's common, but very commonly planted here. It's called brush box, or wristbane box if you like. And brush. <coughs> they usually call it brush box in Australia, but here we call it wristbane box. Lophostamen confertus. It's in the myrtle family, Myrtaceae, it's related to eucalyptus, as evidenced by the seed capsules, which are very similar. Kind of cup-shaped, and then they split open to drop the seeds, much like eucalyptus, and a lot of members of Myrtaceae, the myrtle family. Not like all of them, but eucalyptus, angophora, Corymbia, Lophostamen, Tristaniopsis, a lot of those genera also do that, form their seed.